welcome back to The Woodcrafter. In this episode, we're going to start a new mini-series looking at Fusion 360 and how to use that if you're a woodworker. That sounds good. Stick around. As you can see, my workshop is in complete disarray. The MFT tables have gone, as I said they would in a previous video. It's been replaced by a big stock pile here of timber. Loads of sheet material over there on that side of the workshop. And obviously I'm in the middle of building the Woodcrafter workbench and the course is available now over on my website. However, the downside to that of course is I can't bring you any tool reviews or product reviews or weekend project builds. So what a great time to launch a mini series on how I use Fusion 360 or Fusion 360 for woodworkers. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this bookcase here and we're going to remodel it in Fusion 360 and go from the very basics of how you get hold of the software all the way through to having a full high quality rendered image of that thing that you're going to build and the detailed construction plans. So over the next few weeks, that's what we're going to be focused on. So let's get over to the computer and look first of all, how do I get hold of Fusion 360 without paying the 465 pound licensing fee? So what I want to do is to rebuild my bookcase design, the one we just looked at in the workshop. Um, I did this in SketchUp, crikey, 2019, early 2019, I think I've long since lost the SketchUp files because I moved away from SketchUp to Fusion. I uh, no longer have access to the SketchUp uh, application. Now somebody wrote to me and said, hey, you know, as part of your YouTube bundle, it'd be really cool if you give me the cut list of the bookcase. And to be honest with you, cut list was something I introduced after this build. So I now want to go back and remodel my bookcase in Fusion update the design that I did uh, with some changes as I went through the overall build and then create the cut list from it. I thought it would be interesting to take you through that so you can start to see how I use Fusion which is another question that a lot of people are beginning to ask me. This is not going to be a comprehensive course in Fusion, we're going to focus on the things that we need to know to model this bootcase. But in doing that it will show you the key features, the key aspects of Fusion, it will take you through how to model it, how we do dimensioning, how we do parametric dimensioning, which is pretty important in this area. Uh, we'll show how we do exploded views, how we do the final rendering of the picture, then I might move all that to cut list. So there's gonna be a lot of information here and it'll be a multi-part series. As I said, given the workshop is currently out of action for new projects or reviews as I'm building the workbench, now's a good time as anything to get across this. Before we get into Fusion, let's say how do you get hold of Fusion? It's probably one of the biggest questions that I get asked. So if you come into any browser and you just Google Autodesk, you're going to see this Autodesk official website. Obviously I'm in the UK, so it goes to .co.uk, there's a similar .com, etc. Click on that and we'll go into the Autodesk website. If, you don't, if this screen doesn't come up, because obviously they do change their screens now and then, just click on the Products tab, and then that will take you to this page. Scroll down until you see Fusion 360. Ignore the price, because we're going to show you how to get this for free. So click on Fusion 360. Now this will take you to the Fusion 360 homepage. Don't go to Subscribe, and don't go to the Download Free Trial. Instead, head up to the search box, and in here, type in Hobby License, American spelling, and then search on that. And that will bring up this menu. Look at the top one, Fusion 360, free hobbyist download. Click on that link. That will take you to this Fusion 360 homepage, and this is a hobbyist homepage. Incidentally, if you're a startup company, uh, click on this link. Are you a startup? Click here to get Fusion 360 for startups. There's some conditions, a uh, certain number of employees from memory, and certainly a revenue threshold that you need to be below. If you meet the criteria, you can get a free license for your company, and you can use that commercially, so you can design things, etc. And that's what I use for all my YouTube stuff and the designs that I make in my business, because I'm inside the thresholds at the moment. So you renew that up to three years, 
and then you've got to go to the full subscription model. But today we're looking at the hobbyist, which is what most people will be using. So click on the get started now, and then there's some forms to fill in, and then that will register your account, and then you can use that. Once you've got that nailed, you can then just come along and download the software from the free trial or anywhere else. Now, as you're installing your software, it will ask you to log in. So if you log in to the same account that you've just made as you've signed up for that free license, this is what you'll end up with. Your username in the top right hand corner and personal not for commercial use is a license that you're using. And I think you've got to renew this every year as well from memory, but it's a very, very simple process. You just click renew, you confirm you're still a hobbyist user and you crack on. Now this is the window that's going to be presented to you and to be honest with you when I first started using Fusion I found this a very intimidating environment. Now I've been using Fusion for probably about three or four months and now I find it very very familiar and easy to use. So it's well worth going through that learning curve so you can really get to grips with this. So let's give some terminology. On the left hand side here is your data panel. Now the data panel is where all your project information is going to be. You can see I've got a lot of things in here, but then again, I've been creating a lot of projects either for the workshop or the 3D printer. So you'll get the default project and you'll also get this learning one here that's got some interesting samples for you to look at. If you scroll down the data pane, you've got some libraries so you can create your own assets. So for example, I have a Woodcrafter logo one that I created. I save that down as an asset and I can reuse that as required across projects. And then some sample stuff that takes you through basic training, some different diagrams, some events they've got coming up. And it's worthwhile browsing, but not that important to us. You can hide the data panel by clicking on this little hide data panel um, box at the top. Oh, that goes away. And this is Fusion proper. This is what you're really going to be using. First thing is workspaces. Now that's this design in the top left hand corner. If you click on the down arrow, you can see you've actually got a number of different workspaces. The design workspace is where you're going to spend most of your time building up the models, or in our case, the furniture we're going to create. A of design is quite useful if you functionally know what you want something to do, but you don't know how to build it and what the design looks like yet. So you can almost interact and brainstorm with Fusion to help to build up that model. Rendering is something we're going to be using as part of this mini-series and that gives us photorealistic pictures of the things that we're designing. Animation allows us to do, uh, well, animated designs so you can start to see the design if you've got rotating pieces inside it. Uh, for example, we could show drawers opening and closing or covered doors opening and closing in our furniture design. But it also allows us to do exploded views which is really, really useful and something I use an awful lot. Simulation, not a lot of use for us woodworkers because it doesn't simulate wood, but any other material, your plastics, your metals, it will simulate. And that's where you actually start to look at modeling stresses and strains on your design. Manufacturing is where you start to look at your tool paths. So if you're into CNC or if you're into 3D printing, you can use a manufacturing workspace to start to show how the tool paths are going to move and how you're going to manufacturing it and drawing is where we then create the engineering drawings. Now each of these has got its own set of tools and those tools here are shown in the modeling bar. And this modeling bar will change depending on the workspace that you're in. So for example, if I come down to a render, these tools now change in this modeling bar and those tools are relevant for rendering actions. So in this modeling bar, these are the tools that are most appropriate for what you want to do. And it also pins at the top here some of the more frequently used tools. Clicking on the Create button there, for example, gives you the full list of tools that Fusion have for creating things. And as you start to add plugins into this, if you add a Create plugin, then that will start to appear down here at the bottom. You can see I've got one that you won't have, Create Bomb, and that just allows me to export bill of material information so I can create some of the, um, the cutting lists that we use further down the line. So you'll have your set inside here. The one you won't have is that create bomb. Now you use the create ones for, well, creating things. So as we start to build up the bits and bobs of our design, create is where you create them. And there's all sorts of things inside here, boxes, cylinder spheres, torus rings, coils, pipes, 
some things to manipulate the things we're designing to make them bigger to turn them around to follow paths and we'll get into some of these tools during this mini course modify so once you've built something you might want to change it you may want to make it a bit fatter you may want to put a fillet on it you might want to put a chamfer on it you may want to hollow the inside out so modify allows you to modify the things that you're building and similarly you've got all the appropriate things on here assemble allows us to sit things together so we can start to do joints which is quite useful for woodworking or we can make new components and so on and so forth and we'll look at some of those um, during this mini course Construct, that allows us to make different construction planes that allows us to create new objects. And again, we'll be using some of these as we go through. Inspect allows us to measure things and do different analyses on things. Insert allows us to import things from other areas and add them to our model. And select is what you'd expect it to be. We can select different parts of our model. So this is the really the home of all the tools that you're going to be using as we go through the journey. Over on the right hand side here, we've got a small cube, top, front, bottom, home side. And in the center, we've got this big open space where we actually create our thing. And that's known as the graphics window. Now, again, the graphics window will change depending on what you're using. So if you go to the render window, you can see that's now got a background for our images. And it's a very, very different thing. We still call it the graphics window, but it's a different graphics window that's relevant to rendering. Now you can navigate round. If you grab your cube, you can now turn that cube and you can see that your graphic window is moving round accordingly. Um, and you can see that. So all your objects have a top, a front, a right, a back, a left and a bottom. And if you ever get confused, whole button takes you back to that standard view, an isometric type view. And these little orange things here in the centre of the window, that's what's known as your origin. And you always start at zero. Now zero is a point in space that's defined. So zero y, zero x, zero z is that point there that you see. So as I go up the blue line, I'm incrementally increasing the, the, the z position. As I come along the red line, I'm incrementally increasing the x position. And as I go down the green line, I'm incrementally increasing that Y position. So you can now show any point in space for the objects that you're going to use. Down on the bottom here, we have a display control window. So you can click on the on this orbit button here. That changes your cursor to that sign. And now you can manually rotate that round. Escape releases that. You can do exactly the same move by grabbing the cube. Or if you have a three button mouse, Shift and the center button will also give you that same functionality, which is a lot quicker. You've then got a hand. The hand allows you to pan round, escape to release. And again, the center button with no shift allows you to pan round. You have a zoom that allows you to zoom in and out. And again, three button mouse of a wheel allows you to do the same thing. We have a fit that allows us to fit the object that we're looking at to the window or look at the overall window. We have display settings, which gives us a few things here. The most important one is actually around the camera view. And you can have orthographic perspective or perspective with ortho bases. Um, I tend to use perspective. And there's some other features down here that are more advanced that we're probably not going to use. Mesh displays, the environment we'll use when we get to the rendering. Effects we'll use when we get to the rendering. Object visibility is something we're not probably going to use. Camera we've looked at, ground plane offset, we'll look at when we get to rendering. The next option along is your grids and your snaps. That allows us to change the, the grid, make these units smaller or make them automatic and allows us to snap into key points of that grid or not. And then the viewport allows us to have multiple views inside that window. Again, not something we'll tend to use too much. Okay, in order to make this real, let's just open up an example and just show how these different workspaces actually operate, etc. So I'll come up to the top left hand corner and I'm going to click on the show data panel to bring up our side menu. And we'll pick on the bench dog kennel. Now straight away you can see that I've got a number of things inside the project here. I've got the bench dog kennel design itself. I've also got the drawing, which is a diagram that you download um, from the website. And I've got the jig, and if you've seen that, that was a very, very simple jig I made from my 3D printer to allow me to line the holes up 
on that device. And I keep all these together inside that project folder. So that's how you can classify and control some of these things. I'll bring up the Fusion 360 drawing first of all. And there you can see that in the design view. That's the thing that we were building. Now if you look here on this menu, you can start to see the key components. So I've got a top rail and I can turn that top rail off. You can see the joinery that we put inside this thing and I can turn it on again. I've got the left side, the right side, the mid rail and the bottom rail. And all these are components. And as we draw out the, the design we're going for, the bookcase, we'll talk a bit more about components, why they're important to us and why they're different than bodies. But you can see how that works inside that view. If I then come along to the render view, you can see it changes and you now you can see that I've set the render up here and I've got the lighting sorted out, you can clearly see the shadows, you can see the nice grain on the wood there so it actually looks like oak and you can see the shadows and the reflection. And down here you can also see the actual picture I made that I rendered and that's the one that I use on the drawings and on the diagrams. So you can see that's looking really quite good and all that goes on inside that render pane. If I come down to the animation, you can now see I've exploded that diagram and I've created the component parts that you can also see in the diagrams. Now if I go to the drawing, I've already created the drawing, but this is where I would access the drawing pane. Let me bring in the drawings for you. Okay, so this is now the drawing. You can see I'm in the drawing pane here. And interestingly, it opens up as a separate project. So my bench dog design is still here. And I can still come ahead and look at the different design features of that. But my drawings are over here. And now down at the bottom, you can see the different pages. So that's my front cover. We then go through to this diagram. And you can see I've got tables in here that talks about the different components. They talk about the, uh, the material it's made of. They talk about the different descriptions inside here, and that's all reference to the diagram. You can see we break each component down. This is a top rail now, and you can see the joinery, the dovetail joinery inside there, how deep that is, how wide that is. And all this information is all automatically generated from the file. And similarly, I've got the bottom rails, I've got the sides and the other side, I've then got the central point, and then I've got the exploded diagram. Now, all the information here is taken from the design that we did and we'll have a look how we do that but hopefully that makes it real for you so you can see how that comes together now in the next lesson we're going to start modeling the actual project and we're going to start to have a look at that bookcase hope you found that useful then so next time we'll start off the modeling of this in fusion 360 see you soon